14 years ago, I came from Amsterdam to New York and decided to live here. And I realized after two or three years that was an incredibly energy-consuming place, almost like vampirism. I felt uh, so exhausted and I really was looking for some kind of place I can go out at least for a few days, just to hug the tree or sit on the river and throw the stones in the lake. And then I was looking for the very large storage space, something that I can put my things, which is, you know, coming from Europe. I have them all over the place. I was like a gypsy. I have the things in Berlin. I have the things in Rome. I have the things in Amsterdam. I had some stuff in Stromboli, in Volcano Island. So I was looking for the place that finally I can put everything together. And then I arrived here. And here was a space was completely filled with uh, antique uh, things. And I bought it for my birthday. And I moved everything in, my own stuff. And it was a disaster because there was rain, the roof was coming, the, my books was ruined, everything was ruined. And then I was here with, in this empty space standing in the middle. And it's like revelation. I said, oh my God, this is actually a place where I can make my foundation and my institute and my legacy and everything I always wanted to do. It's just the right moment and right situation. And that's how everything started. You know, all my life I struggle to put performance art in some kind of mainstream art context. And it took me 40 years to do that. And uh, I felt that the history of performance art is not known. And people really don't know the sources. And uh, there's so many young artists having very similar ideas from the 60s and 70s. And the young critics uh, the view them in the magazines like a brand new ideas and just happen. And they're inventive and they're not. So I think it's really important for everybody to know what history of performance art is. So we we'll have a very large archive here that uh, you know, everybody can come and study and see what happened before. So when Lady Gaga made the mid-dress, that we know that at least three artists made mid-dress in the 70s, and we should know their names and what they've done, and what is new with Lady Gaga mid-dress. So you know, that we don't present things already done before as uh, never exist. That's a very important point. But the part of this, there's many different things this institute is going to have. One important thing is a school for the, for the uh, public, because public actually never learn how to see performance art. They never learn to see something which is long durational. They never learn what to do with their breathing, with their mind, with their time, how to see something with nothing's happening, that nothing is moving, just image, live image in the space. So that's going to be this kind of um, educational thing for them. When you enter the space, you have to sign a contract with me. That's the major, main thing. And the contract is to give me word of honor uh, that you're going to spend six hours here. And if you don't keep your word of honor, it's your problem. But word of honor has to be there on the paper. And uh, when you sign this uh, contract, you will have a lab coat, you will have headphones who block the sound, and you have to put all your possessions in the locker, uh, especially your iPhone, your telephone, your uh, watch, computer, everything that reminds you of time, your money, and then you just keep the key. And when you have done all that, you are ready to actually change from being spectator into experimenter, and you're ready for experience. So it's very simple contract. If you give me your time, I give you experience. If you don't give me time, there is no experience. I'm very interesting to learn from shamans the transmission of energy because I, you know, I used to live with Aborigines for a while. I am very connected to Tibetan Buddhism and I've been now several times in Brazil and there's so many things to learn. So that kind of transmission of energy is very important in the practice, which I like to learn for myself to find out an experience and to see what kind of form I can find that I can teach that in the performance context because performance is such, as I say, invisible form of art. It's all about energy dialogue. It's all about being in the presence. 
and that presence have to you have to feel it you have to something happen to you and it's not nothing you can describe there is nothing between two of us just empty space yet you have to feel that and that energy have to change you and have to focus you and have to bring you to your own self you know to make this piece artist is present who looks super simple like just sitting on the chair took me literally one year of preparation. I was preparing like for the NASA space program or something. And because I could have to change my entire, my metabolism of my body and uh, how I can take only water by night, the, the food uh, uh, where I have to digest, that I don't need to go to the bathroom, that I don't need to, to move for this period, uh, the period of time I was sitting there. So it takes one year to kind of readjust yourself. and. Uh, and I went to this project completely not knowing how much problems going to arise and how I going to have to deal with them when they arise because I could not rehearse this piece. That was the most um, uh, really um, life-changing experience. I stand up out of this chair and I was not the same anymore. It was something really opened my eyes about, about you know, what is my function on this planet? What am I supposed to do? why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, uh, and this legacy came so clearly that all my experiences, everything I know till now, I have to unconditionally give to the, to the world, to the, the, my public, but also to the young artists who are, you know, continue to do performances. And to, you know, encourage any performative form of art who doesn't even have a name yet, is going to be developed in the future. Wow. You know, the most important is to learn unconditional love. And that's the most hardest thing to do. Because we always are based with a certain, we always love somebody or something. And then we always want that this lasts forever. And this always is related to attachment. And then you know that can still last forever and you're losing it. And it's always related to suffering. But unconditional love is the purest form of love, that you love just unconditionally. And this is something that takes all life to learn, and you still don't learn. And that's the, I think that that's the most important thing to learn. And the one thing that I really was changing my life in the artist's presence is that I really experience deeply unconditional love total stranger sitting opposite of me. I have this incredible giving openness that just came from, I don't, I don't know, that really happened. It was a miracle for me. That I was a person sitting in the front of me and don't know who the person is. I never saw in my life. And I have this heart opener and I just love him. And he, the person felt that. And uh, it's very hard to do this in your own private life. That's very difficult. It's very hard to kind of match what you learn in the performance to put in private life and practice. You know, especially living in American culture, that is completely removed from the everyday life. That is something dirty. You're not supposed to get old here. And we, we have to live forever. And that's not reality. If you go to East, especially to go to India, you see that that is part of everyday life. And also in my culture is everyday, you know, part of everyday life. My grandmother used to have the clothes ready for the funeral for 40 years of her life. And as the, you know, the, the fashion would change, she would change the, the clothes. It would be poker dots sometimes, then little squares, and then the brown, then the dark blue, and so on. And she lived 103. So that was really, you know, only to understand that, and mortality is, is the, and to get rid of fear of dying it's the way to enjoy life there's nothing else we have to learn that and for me it's very important to die conscious without fear and without anger the three things that I really like to achieve in, in you know to practice in a way to think about it to include in my own life because that makes you so much more focused in real life if you really understand that how temporary we are here but also my entire idea of performance is about now, because the now is the only reality we're ever going to have. Past already happened, future didn't happen. 
this we are talking this moment. We, we are, that's the now. And that's the only, only, only reality there is. I would like to finish with, with just a moment that we just experienced 10 seconds of now with not talking. And we just look at each other, and just, just feel now and don't do nothing about. And it's nothing but you and me at the moment in this space. And it's all that matters. <laughs>